Kia ora everyone. 30 years ago in the Australia of underbelly, Mr Asia and a sociopathic serial killer named Ivan Millat, a young New Zealand woman, Linda Davies, simply disappeared. Now, disappearances in which neither the person nor a body are found and no one is ever arrested for the crime are still very rare. But three decades on, that is the Linda Davy case exactly. Now, Australian police are reopening their inquiry into her disappearance and offering a reward for information about it. Why? I talked to police and her brother in a moment. But first, her boyfriend, to whom Linda sent the last thing ever heard from her, what looks like a hastily written letter. By way of background, I asked Stephen Lavender what Linda was like. Um, she came from Wakatani. Um, she was... Um very, very much a bookie person, um, uh, uh, very, um, a little introvert, and um, yeah, just a really, really nice person. I used to run home from work, I was madly in love with her, I used to get off the train and run and run home, and, and there she'd be. Yeah, no, I, I, I loved her very much, and, and she was a very, very easygoing person, and, but a little introvert, certainly into the books. I actually met Linda in, um, in New Zealand in Christchurch. We were, we were looking at the the uh, the wizard, in fact, in the square there, many years ago, he was an orator there, uh, with a big long beard, and she had a she had a large Halsation dog, and um, we were uh, uh, attracted to each other, and we met, and um, it wasn't long before that we wrote, and she came to Australia and and lived with me for the two years, and it was in that time that um, um, I got a little bit unwell, and she was visiting me in hospital. And we were very much in love, and it turns out that she, um, she, she just went uh, AWOL, just went missing. S so wrote, April she... the 6th, 1980, is yes. the last day you saw her. It's the last day she came to hospital, right? It is, yes, yes. Uh, um, and about two days later, I, I, I was pretty hooked on her coming, because every visiting time, um, she would um, uh, be there for me, and, and I got a bit sort of... Um, uh, used to her coming, so I was okay. a bit alarmed when a friend who, who we lived in the house with uh, came up and said her bed wasn't slept in and that uh, all her belongings had gone. And uh, I, was, I, was, I was pretty disturbed, so I got, virtually got myself out of hospital. And, and um, about two days later, I actually got a letter which more or less said, Dearest Steve, you've gone away for a few, a couple of days, be back soon, I love you lots. And um, that was the last letter that I ever had. And the police have that letter now. And uh, it turns out that, that I, I think perhaps she was coerced. It, the writing was rather spidery, and um, she was a bit um, uh, uh, um, seemingly coerced into writing the letter. So, so the, jo the dots have never really been joined together after 30 and, years. And, and when she came to hospital on the 6th, she didn't mention to you because she had visited you every day. And, and as you said, it was one of the highlights, of, in fact, the highlight of your day when she came in to see you. She didn't mention that she was going away at all. So this letter's the first you heard of it. Absolutely, yes. Yes. And it was, it was posted in a post box very close. And um, yes, it was, very, it was a very quick um, handwritten letter that... Um, it, it wasn't seemingly her, her, it was her writing, but she wrote very neatly. And um, this particular uh, writing was, was, it seemed like she'd been sort of asked to write it. And then the days passed and the weeks passed and so on with total silence, which just must have been terrible. Yes, it, yeah, it, it's, it's, it, 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 it's, um, there's no real closure after all these years, and as we said before, you know, like, like most people that have people that go missing, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing to, to deal with. You just, just have to get on with your life. However, there's not many days that go by that I don't think of it. And when the police post a reward, and when suddenly, 30 years on, you're doing media interviews and thinking about it and discussing it, is it tremendously hard for you at a time like this? Um, well, actually, I, I think the more people that know um, about it, you never know, you might just jog someone's memory, and this is, this is uh, uh, you know, you never, you never ever know, you know, there could be some closure. So I'm, ju I, I'm just hoping, perhaps, someone who was around at the time, um, and it could be a New Zealand connection, who knows? Uh, uh, the, you know, there, there could be a phone call to the police, but but um, who knows? We're ju I'm just very hopeful and optimistic that perhaps something will arise from this interview and from the, the paper. 
30 years on, still hope and optimism. That was Linda's boyfriend, Stephen Lavender. Now to Linda's brother, Nigel, and the policeman leading the inquiry. And we should say this is a new policeman. Obviously, the one who was working 30 years ago has long since retired. This is Detective Sergeant Robert George. I asked the detective if there's any evidence to support widespread rumours in Australia that Linda's disappearance was somehow linked either to serial killer Ivan Milat or to Mr Asia and his drug ring. No, essentially it is just that speculation. So we are investigating and we are following through the leads that we are getting on this case. And certainly the uh, Mr Asia, John Clark one is one that can be ruled out quite easily because Terry Clark was in custody in the United Kingdom in 1979. Um, as for um, the other people that have been named, uh, again, it is just speculation. We don't have any information that links uh, Linda to any of these people. Nigel, how tough is this for you? Because I, I guess, you know, you would think about your sister always, but at times like this, when there's media interest and rewards being posted, is it tough or are you really pleased that the police are looking at the case again? I, it's, it's really good that it's going back through it again, but um, yeah, it sort of brings you back and brings memories back through your head all the time, so yeah, it's a bit hard, but it's good. Where did police get to at the time? Were there any cul-de-sacs that they'd got a way down or was it completely without any uh, leads at all 30 years ago? No, the police certainly did a, quite a bit of investigation on it back in 1980 when Linda went missing. So a number of inquiries were made with um, hotels, hospitals, mental health facilities and those sorts of inquiries that we make when someone goes missing. Um, and unfortunately they did not locate Linda. Um, one inquiry that is important to us and we would like to speak to that witness again was uh, a witness came forward and said that they saw someone they thought may have been Linda and uh, this was on a flight from Sydney to Auckland on the 7th of April 1980. Now uh, we've only got a short um, notation of that in our investigation file so we would really like to speak to that witness again um, if they could come forward. And so they were. So this person was on a flight into Auckland and thought that they saw Linda at the time. Obviously, you checked at the time with immigration authorities to see if she'd used her passport, and that turned up nothing. Look, there were some inquiries made at the time, but um, now that we're re-investigating this matter, uh, some of those records aren't as complete as they could be and have been destroyed in the passage of time. So um, we would really like to speak to that witness again and see uh, what they might be able to tell us. Clearly, whatever happened probably took place in Australia, although, as you say, there's uh, some suggestion she may have come to New Zealand. But do you have a sense that there may be people in New Zealand who can help you? Uh, certainly. I think um, until we, we confirm one way or the other with that uh, witness about Linda being on that plane, well, it is possible that something has happened to Linda on the New Zealand side of this. So, um, in all likelihood, it, it, well, it is possible that it was a mistaken identity on, the, on that flight and so whatever has happened has happened here in Australia. Um, either way, we'll be open-minded and continue to investigate. Um, and on that note, we've been getting excellent support and assistance from the New Zealand Police in this investigation. Nigel, would you like to say anything to people who may be watching this with some sense of what happened to Linda, given the possibility that there may have been New Zealanders involved at some level? Yeah, I'd just like to say that if anyone knows anything, like it's 30 years down the track, so circumstances have changed, so if someone could come forward who couldn't then, if they come forward, it'd help the family heaps. What was she like, Linda? Tell me about her. Yeah, she was a happy person, sort of made friends easy, pretty intelligent, knew what was going on, loved the family and got on well. And not the sort of person who would have taken foolhardy or reckless risks? No, not at all. That's not Linda.